So yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, we talk a lot about RPGs. Like the first panel we ever did at a PAX was called Beyond Dungeons and Dragons right. back in 2008, and the whole gist of that panel was, guys, there are RPGs that are not Dungeons and Dragons or like or like Dungeons and Dragons yeah. in a different skin, like. Pathfinder or yeah. D twenty Star Wars yeah. or whatever, or those garbage games like Shadowrun, which has never actually been a good game. Right. Anyway, the point is, we had a period of time where we played a lot of RPGs in college and shortly after college, and we still have a lot of people who are good to play with. You don't have that problem. The problem we have is that all the people are adults, and you can't get time together. And RPGs usually take a significant time to play. Yep, they take the good ones uh, often have a lot of rules to learn and investment. And that those are our hurdles, and this is, I think, why people don't play tabletop RPGs in general and will even pay GMs to run games yep. with them is because it's just such a to-do to play an RPG. So, uh, well, like, Actually, there's another point there I want to make before we get in. As a, as a reviewer, I can read the rules to a board game and review it. Mm -hmm. But with RPGs, it's very hard to review an RPG without playing it a lot with a varied audience of people. Right. So it's very hard to get to the point, even if I've played a bunch of RPGs, where I am comfortable passing some sort of judgment or reviewing it. Right. I've got uh, some RPGs on my shelf. I've never played a lot of them, yep. quite a few. And it's like, I would have to play one of those several times with several different groups, because I might have a good review, but like, oh, no, that was the group, or we played it wrong, or... You know, I'd have to see, like, what is this game really all about? It's yeah. such a thing. When so, you review a game, you got to be able to say, who is this for, who is this not for? Right. you got to get, you know, it's like, oh, well, that time the people didn't really learn the game when we played it. That we time can, I played it with the experts. We you know, played and, the Wizard's Grimoire enough to give a real review of right. it. Right. So, uh, the Wizard's Grimoire is a game that I saw, and it was like, hey, get it on, like, itch.io for, like, a few dollars, and you get all these other games in a big bundle that are all just PDFs, and I said... That sounds good to me. Just a bunch of PDFs not going on my shelf. Won't feel guilty if I don't play them, right? Yep. So paid the few dollars in itch.io. I downloaded a bundle of PDFs. I read the Wizard's Grimoire, the first one. Uh, I didn't read the other ones, but they're the similar, from what I can tell, uh, the Barbarian's Bloody Quest and all the other ones are basically the same mechanics, just with different, uh, you know, different setting, different character. Uh and basically, it's it's by Vincent Baker, who you who, may know from Apocalypse uh, World, Kill Puppies for Satan, Dogs in the Vineyard, In a Wicked Age. Apocalypse World is what most people would know, right? So, uh, puts out this game. It's a really brief game. The PDF is like a handful of pages. Most of the pages you don't even have to read to play. You only have to read like two pages to play. In fact, you need to exercise the cell, the like the force of will to not read everything. That's right. So the way it works is one per it's a solo RPG. One person is the player. And what you do in order to play the game is you need to find two, not one, not three, exactly two volunteers to play the game. Those players need those volunteers, they're not players. Those two volunteers need A no prior knowledge of the game whatsoever. B, no time commitment whatsoever. You can play for one minute or forever. Yep, like you, basically any player can say, nope, we're done. Any player, the player or any volunteer can just be like, that's it, we're done with this session, and you can end it. At, ow, I hit myself with the microphone. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't even cause it this time. You can end the game as abruptly as necessary at any time, whenever you want or have to or any, doesn't matter, right? It is the least investment imaginable. You can, if you are the player, solo game, remember, you can just carry the game around with you, and literally any brief moment that you have found two volunteers, you can play. Like, you're on a train. You happen to, Two nerds happen to sit near you. you or could, a better, a nerd and, like, a random non-nerd. Right. You convince them to volunteer. They volunteer. After five minutes, they're bored. You, you're done. All right, you did it. Good. It's like now, it literally is that easy to play this game. I would be shocked if you ran into people who after five minutes were bored because what was fascinating about this, both playing as a volunteer and by watching other people like play it and other people be volunteers, is that it it's real easy to get invested. Like right. the game the simple bare minimum mechanics and the rules of how the story progresses really get people to be creative, and the fact that there are two volunteers is crucial to this. Right, so here's how it works. The player reads their little document, and it tells a story. You are 
some kind of wizard. He build your stats with this system. You can change your stats every session if you want to. Go nuts. Who cares? Yep. They, they don't progress or anything, right? Um, so it was that abyss of the two courts compiled her notes into a signature right, and arrayed right, right. herself for travel. Right. There's a story where somehow there was a magic book and you've got it and you don't understand shit in this magic book. So you are going to try to learn what's in the magic book. And the magic book is the several last pages of the PDF. And you only read sections of that book that is literally given to you when you have achieved enough understanding via in-game mechanics. And then with your self-adult restraint, you only read one section of the book at a time when you're allowed to do so. So I have only unlocked so far one section of the book. I haven't read sections two through X. I don't know how many sections there are. Yep. I only know what's in that first section. And the goal as the solo player is to play enough, to have enough sessions that you can read the whole book. But that's not actually your goal. Your actual goal, according to the rules, it says your goal as a player is to get in trouble and then get out of trouble. Hopefully. And that happened reliably <laughs> every single time i played i got in trouble and got out of trouble right now the volunteers what are they all about well here's how this game works 90 percent of the game does involves no dice when it does involve dice it's a d6 but don't worry about that d6 right now the way the game works is you are the player you find two volunteers who are willing to volunteer they read some little tiny pieces of paper which is like a whole page of the pdf and it doesn't you tell cut them much. It in half it doesn't tell them much it just tells them the player is going to ask you questions. You answer them. Your goal as volunteers is to just answer the questions in the way that pleases you most. Now, Entertain yourself with your answers to the questions. Yup. However, your answers to the questions only count and become real if both volunteers agree Yes, that is the answer. So if, that is the magic. Like, that's the that's secret the, sauce. That's the only. That's the whole game, basically. Because if there's if there's just one volunteer, like it's stupid. Yeah, it's boring. Like it doesn't go anywhere. You don't have enough creative juice from one person. They can get stale. But two people, like when I was playing with the other, I was one of the volunteers, and we had another friend as a volunteer. Like he'd say something, I'd be like, no. But what? If, and we really started bouncing off of each other in a hurry mm -hmm. when we could veto each other. Mm-hmm. And it made sure that whatever... It must be unanimous. You need two votes for anything to become a correct, true answer. But the other magic the sauce is that we can't just, like, we're constrained heavily by all we can actually do is answer questions that Scott asks That's us. That's right. These volunteers, if they have any... I can't just be like, you are sitting right. in a wo cottage right. by the woods. If these volunteers have any concept of normal, our typical D&D-style RPGs with the GM... They feel like they're a team of GMs, right? Where they decide everything in the world. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. That's not what you are. Scott will All ask a question. All you are is procedural generators of answers. It right? edges almost more into like uh, sleep is death, except there's two people who have to agree right. on what happens. So the player, right, they're really in control by asking the questions. They'll be like, you know, and sort of, you know, mostly in control, right? They'll be like, what's the weather like, right? What time is it? Yup. Who who knocked on my door? Right. Who no, right? What's I, uh, I go into a town? What building do I see? You know, the players, the, the the volunteers might be like, you don't see a building, right? There are no buildings here. It's like, all right, fine. I go into a tavern. What does it smell like? Who's here? Who's sitting at the table in the back corner? You can ask all kinds of leading questions, non-leading questions, and those volunteers have to answer all these questions or end the session. Right. And that is what makes the things happen. Now the dice. Right. So sometimes you want to do something. Right. And, you know, you that you can't necessarily get done via asking questions or there are questions that you can't really ask. Right. Like mm -hmm. if I'm just asking the questions like what does the grimoire mean? Yeah, it's ha uh, ha ha, right? What is uh, oh, I met uh, you met a large, mysterious man. Is this man planning to kill me? Right. It's like. That's not something that like you would you know be able yeah. to tell like how warm is it right? Because like so, if I got asked that question as a volunteer, you don't know, you right. can't read his face. Now what? Right. So, uh, what you do in those cases is you have your stats and you roll the one d six, and the way the system works is you pick the relevant stat, and if the d six goes over the number or that's sort of like a, a equal or over, that's a failure. You want to be as high as possible 
while being under. So if my stat is four, I think maybe equal, oh, I forget, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, you over is bad. I forget if equal is bad, but under is definitely a success. And you still want the number to be higher, right? So if I'm doing like a, you know, test for stealthiness or whatever, <laughs> right, or subtlety, I forget what it's actually called. I'm not looking at the PDF right now. Uh, you know, then I would roll, and if I got like a three and my stat was four, it's like, all right, well, I can, you know, I, I, I was really good. I got like three opportunities to be stealthy or whatever. Yep. And it's probably going to be a success full endeavor, right? The other thing that's really interesting is that there is an option to submit to circumstance, right? So, for example, in the third session where you weren't there and I, I played, uh, at one point, it's like, oh, you stumble into a bunch of cultists and you you weren't stealthy and they saw you and they caught you. It's like, I submit to circumstance, right? So, I submit and when you submit, it's the same system, but all the as high as you get is the number of things you can keep. So you can yep. choose. Like I, I, I keep my dignity. I keep my dignity. I keep my life. I keep my bearings. And it's like, all right, well, you lose. You lose. You your, lose your clothes. You lose your stuff. And that sword. And you're right. It's like you know. It's like that. Basically, to prevent the volunteers, <laughs> it's like okay, you you choose what you keep. You choose what you live. And then the book says, all right, the volunteers now tell you. You know what happens next, right? It's like there are instructions on each dice roll uh, for the different, so like six or seven different ways you can roll the dice on exactly what to do and exactly what the volunteers do. So it's like if you if you fail a certain thing, it's like okay, you are unconscious, you 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 are you know surprised or shocked. You're unconscious. You are then uh, a what you're snapped out of it by something. The volunteers have to say what snaps you. You ask the volunteers. What snaps me out of it, right? And now they have to answer that question. And this leads to really fun uh, interactions. Like at one point, Scott, I, in one of the games we played, you basically did a thing that lets you know the mind of one of like one of right, our right, NPCs. Right, right, It's like the, when you roll the dice, it basically either allows you to ask questions or forces you to ask certain questions, or it's always yep. relating to the questions, right? It's like, well, now you have to ask this question, or you may now ask these three quest up to X questions yep. you normally couldn't like ask. Like, or do these bandits actually plan to harm me? And then as a volunteer, I got to decide what the truth is there. Yep. And be truthful you about it. You could say yes or no, but you, yeah. you just, you have to answer my question yep. or stop the game. And there's some magic here. Like this concept is very powerful. And I was incredibly surprised at how easily even, because you know, when you try to get someone to play an RPG, even like what seems like a short, low investment, investment one, uh, like Ghost Court, sometimes people like aren't super enthusiastic or like they're really hesitant. People who are even hesitant in All this game. All you got to do is answer questions. Yeah. It's like even someone who knows nothing about RPGs, it's like, all right, uh, you know, it's like every session starts with a sort of like a hook, right? There's these little like tiny pa single paragraph or even smaller hooks in the in the PDF. That's like a whole page actually. Yep. It's just, just hooks. You I've just been picking one and starting, but I guess you can make up your own hooks also. But you just pick a hook and then start asking questions. So you read the hook and start asking. And all that the volunteers got to do is answer. They don't got to do nothing. Yep. Right? The player is the one who has to know at least a little bit about RPGs, but you don't got to teach a volunteer shit. All they got to do is answer questions. You know, all right, what 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 does the town look like? What time is it? What what color is the bartender's skin? What's their yep. what are they selling in the shop? The what's, highest what's the price? And the thing is, you can't do anything but ask questions. So it's like, how much does the beer cost? A gold piece. How many gold do I have? Uh Five gold pieces. <laughs> I drink five beers. All right. I I offer the man a, a gold because <laughs> it's like, you know. How many gold do I have? None. The two things you I don't can... have an you don't have an inventory. You just ask questions. The highest praise I can give is that in the the game I was an assistant in, and then a game I watched were radically different. And Every both game really I fun. played was radically different. Like the first the one, volunteers was... basically, and the, and it's who, who is playing and who the volunteer and the questions they ask and who the volunteers are and their mental state drives the game. In a crazy different direction. Like, the first one was like, oh, these bandits actually aren't that bad. And the second one was like, Scott's erotic journey. <laughs> yeah. And the third one I played, uh, the two volunteers were seasoned D&D &D GMs who had, I imagine, little experience with other RPGs. 
And sure enough, it was a dungeon full of cultists. Yeah. And it's like, I guess that's the story you know how to tell. <laughs> but the, the most high praise I can give is that sitting next to a game of this, you really want to be able to answer questions. You want to be a volunteer, like badly. Mm. I, it was really hard to not shut up when Scott and Kate were being your volunteer. Uh, you <laughs> like I kept jumping in and you were like, shh. Yeah, I didn't ask you. <laughs> yeah, I but didn't. I really wanted to answer. I had good ideas. Too bad. <laughs> this game... The, the risk to you as a person who could play an RPG is so low, you should just get right. this game and make random people play it with you. Also, to the, the stuff you need to play this game is you need the PDF, which you could put on a few pieces of paper or just like your iPad or your yep. phone, right? You need a single D6. You need... Nothing else. I have been like having a book and writing down everything that happens. That is not necessary or dictated or whatever. That's I just, just fun. You guess you could actually do an audio recording might be easier. I feel I like I think, we, I think we're going to try to play this game a few times and record it and see how that goes. Maybe live stream it. Right. But the point is you need nothing. So you just bring a D6 with you everywhere you go and either a digital or physical copy of the PDF and... Anytime you're in a situation where you got nothing to do for some minutes, even a few minutes, you know, maybe at least, you know, 10 minimum, right? Maximum hours. You got two people. They're w ready, willing, and able. You play. It's your game. You carry it around with you. You're the player. It's not like you have other, right? If other people want to play, they get their own PDF and start their own deal. Yep. Right? And maybe you can volunteer for them too, but no, it's your game. You're playing solo. You just need volunteers to help you unlock the Wizard's Grimoire. And the other ones in the series appear to follow the same mechanics. So I imagine. I think I'm gonna actually. Now that I'm looking at them, I think the Barbarian's Bloody Quest is the one I might just start right. playing. Right. I, I, I looked at the PDF of the Barbarian's Bloody Quest briefly. It is basically the same game. Only obviously you're unlocking not a wizard's grimoire, but something else. You're you're Conan figuring out why the wizard killed everyone you've ever known. Right. And you, you know you unlock pages in the in the PDF that you don't read at the start with your adult abilities. You have similar. You know, just different themes, but you still find two volunteers and ask them questions. That's the mechanic of the game. And you can make, I guess if you wanted to, there would be nothing stopping you from making more games using the two-volunteer ask questions system, the Wizard Grimoire system. Just write up a new character, a new scenario, a new thing to unlock, right? A new set of stats, a new character generation system for those stats, and a bunch of hooks. And that's all you need. You can copy the volunteer page verbatim, basically. Um, so if you can, if there is anyone you want to be a uh, celebrity guest on a live stream where Scott or I play these games, let us know. Like, I want to stream this game. This game, of all the RPGs we could stream, this is the one that has the most potential to not be boring or procedural. It needs nothing, right? <laughs> and also, uh, if you don't have in friends in person... Like if you go on the internet, Joe, you can play you this on, on Discord to, with zero problems. Go on a Discord when and just find two freaking people who are on the Discord at that moment who have a few minute, right? Send them a digital copy of the thing to read the the one page, the volunteer page, not the other pages. You don't even need voice chat. You can do this over text. It would you work could fine. You just chat. You could just chat your questions, but voice chat is probably easier if you have speaking and hearing abilities. Yep. But if not, chatting, texting, just fine. Yeah. Uh, you can even play this game slow rolling over email, email a question, then they email it back and forth. Yeah, and you could play this game by mail. You could do this, whatever. This is the most flexible, least investment, highest payout RPG in maybe history. <laughs> <laughs> a plus for this game. Yep. Vincent Baker is always standout, but mm. this one, I feel like th this one's given me ideas I hadn't thought about. Like it put... It pushed new ground that I had not considered in RPGs and is making me think about a later future of RPGs. It's like, please be a computer for me in this game I am playing. Yep. The That's one thing why they're volunteers. It's like they're just helping you play. You thank them profusely for their... You know, their time and efforts. Computers can do a lot. Doing in terms what a computer of, should and possibly yeah. will do in the future. But computers can do a lot in terms of procedural generation. But one thing they are not good at procedurally generating is stories. Mm. And eh, I've seen some. Not good ones. I've not seen usually. some machine learning pretty good stories. Yeah, yeah, I have, but they're not they're not interactive like this. They're anyway, not anyway. This game is a hundred percent worth playing. Get this game. 
This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. And the Patreon patrons for this episode of Geek Nights are... Uh, this is taking longer to load than usual. Greg Oliver, Ellen Joyce, Eddie McNichol, Just Like a Dude Guy, Kishore Topshin, Link EG, Graham Finch, Jennifer Hitchcock, Chris Midkiff, MyStadium.com, Jay Bantz, Scooter Lonely, Sean Yeager, Nicholas Brando, Mr. Strong Stretch, and 421 Creations, like Johan Sebastian, Bacharach, Ominous, McIntyre, Cyan Mancer, Thunder, Sherman Von Horrell, Rory, Superboy, Clinton Walton, Ren from New Zealand, Ryan Perrin, Drew Openlander, Finn, Dread Lily Tanabray, Sean Klein, Chris Reimer, Thomas Hahn, 